Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Lorraine Rimmelin. I'm from watercolorartisan.com. And I'm sharing with you some specific techniques and tricks that will help you in your negative painting. Uh, one of the things I want to show you is applying color in the background. We really want to see this color mingled in. We don't want to see the color where it's just like stained glass where there's a different color within each shape. So this is what I see happening a lot in classes. I'm going to show you simple what I'm looking to achieve. I want to be able to bring my color in, but I want to be able to mingle it with additional colors. I don't want this to look like the background doesn't belong in my painting. So when I put down my blue, I can immediately pick up another color and start to bring that in. And that color would flow betwe between the branches of the tree. It would flow over and around other trees. But this is going to give me a beautiful mingled background. And I can keep changing my colors as I go along. Right now I'm talking about color. Um, and the mingling of it on the paper. I'm not looking to do a flat wash. I'm looking to make the background of this particular image, which is trees, exciting. I wanted to, um, to see, I'm just dropping it a little bit. I want it to flow between everything. It's really an easy technique. Um, it's an important trick to add to your negative painting. Something you really, really need to um, to know and to pay attention to when you're painting um, in the negative. We don't want to just have these solid colors that won't make any sense to the viewer of your painting. Because the truth is in nature, if I was standing and looking at a line of trees, whatever was behind them would continue this is not continuing. This is showing me behind this tree is yellow, uh, behind this branch is an orange red, behind this branch is a bluish green, and that's not what you'd see. If there was a beautiful sunset behind that tree, you would see that sunset completely through uh, the branches of the tree. Okay, that's a simple, simple um, tip to help you with your negative painting. Great. And then when this dries, I can do additional layers. But you can see the big difference between just painting individual shapes, individual colors, and mingling to look like there's something behind those trees. An easy tip for negative painting to really help you see the shapes is let's eliminate the choices of color and let's work monochromatic. I find that this is perfect um, in class when people are struggling with finding all the shapes. If we take away the color choices and give you just one color that you're gonna change the value of as you work through, it's much easier sometimes to focus just on the shapes. So I'm going to, I've already worked on two layers First I did a light wash of the red I'm using, let it dry completely, then I did my negative shapes around that and it left me with this light layer, these three trees. When it was dry I went back in and put another layer of trees in and this is going to be my final layer and I'm going to go darker now in value. Okay, and now you can see my three layers. My one, two, and three layers. 
And again, I didn't have to think at all about my color choices. All I had to do was just focus on the shapes. I think this is important way for you to start practicing seeing the negative and losing everything else about color. Here we're going to focus on shape and value. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the bleeding out the edges. When I'm doing my negative painting, I'm not looking to just outline the shape of a tree. That's not what I'm interested. So I don't want to come in here and just say, this is my tree and these are, and this is my, the outline of my tree. Yes, the tree appears, but what makes it work is when I lose this edge and I make it really nice and soft. The hard edge is on the inside touching the tree, but out here is a really soft edge. So here I can put in my tree shape And immediately, I'm, immediately, I'm moving that edge. And then it becomes nice and soft, completely on the outer edge, but I've maintained a nice, hard, crisp edge in here. And when I come over to start my next tree, I'm coming into a dry area so I can get a nice crisp hard edge. Another thing you can think of is if you're putting down an edge and you're worried about being able to bleed it away, then what you could do is take a little bit of clear water and let's say this is where my next edge is gonna be. I'm putting a little clear water down first so when I come in with my paint to paint that edge, I immediately know it's gonna start to wash away. It's hitting that water and it's moving, as opposed to this side of the tree, that the, this is not moving because there's no water there until I put down some water. That side didn't move. And now I have a safe area in here that I can just bleed that away. Again, just I'm just trying to give you a few extra tips to make you more successful in your negative painting. Here's a helpful tip that will allow you now to separate two objects that are overlapping each other as you're working through your negative painting. This is completely dry and this leaf over here is kind of the same value as the leaf it's sitting on. The same thing through here. I'm not seeing a defined edge so it's really simple. I'm just going to make a little bit of a tint, very light in value, um, of a shadow color. And now I can come in here and I can work that across this edge. And then immediately I'm going to take clean water and I'm going to remove that back edge of what I just put down. So now I've added a little color in here, change the value so that this leaf pops out. I'm gonna do it again over here where, where this is overlapping and I'll do it where um, this stem is, is a great example. So this stem is running down and it's kind of getting lost in here. So I can go on each side, add a tiny tint of the lightest wash and then I need my clean water and I'm just going to pull that out and bleed that away. But now that stem starts to pop out. Same thing over here. I get to the next stem and I can move this. This works whether you're doing trees or leaves, flowers. 
um, wherever you find that you really need to separate again here the value of this leaf is so similar to the value of that leaf and they need to be separated so I'm going to come in on this side and now in my art I don't always want to paint the entire leaf a different color but I just want to separate the edge and now it's clear that this leaf is sitting on top of that leaf it's very clear that this leaf is sitting on top of that leaf that the stem is on top of that leaf and that's really a simple way to show you how easy it is to separate um, an object if I want this stem to come over this leaf it's really easy there's going to negative paint on each side of it add a little water I'm not looking to change the value of the whole leaf but I need to change the value of it where I want to pull out the other leaf the other that stem okay another one of those little tips that will help you with your negative painting um, I want to thank you for watching my video. Please like below, subscribe to my channel. I'm excited to see it growing. I'm always happy to hear from you in the comments to know what it is you're finding is helping you be successful in negative painting. If there's something you'd like to see me add to this as I continue through this process of negative painting, please let me know in the comments. I am going to start working you into more complicated subjects, which are still going to be as simple as starting with the circles I showed you originally. You have a great day. Happy painting, and I will see you soon. Bye.